gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitt Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. If you like good beer, you'll find it pays to be curious and learn about Schlitz for yourself. Now, the Halls of Ivy. The Halls of Ivy that surround us Welcome again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. You know, many people think of a college president as a man who spends most of his time worrying about his school's financial situation. Now, this is a profound misconception. A college president does not worry about money most of the time. He worries about it all the time. And Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, the president of Ivy, is no exception. At the moment, he and Mrs. Hall, the former Victoria Cromwell of the English stage, are in a taxi on their way to a dinner party at which Dr. Hall is to be the guest of honor. Mrs. Millicent Foster, their hostess, is very wealthy, and the endowment is in sight. Mrs. Hall says, I do like dinner parties. I wonder what the main course will be. Main course? Me. Uh, there is nothing Mrs. Foster likes to serve her guests so much as a celebrity, major or minor. <laughs> she should be very happy this evening, then. In your black tie, you're quite a tasty bitch. <laughs> Thank you. And but not as tasty, I'm afraid, as the major celebrity she originally intended to have tonight. He disappointed her at the last moment. Oh? How? Oh. Yes, he led with his right, was knocked out in the sixth round, and thereby ceased to be a major celebrity. <laughs> and she was forced to settle for a college president. Oh, poor woman. Uh, she is not, thank heavens, a poor woman. She's one of the richest in town, and one of the loneliest. That's why she fritters away so much of her wealth on trivialities. I've been trying for over a year to guide her interests into more constructive channels. Like, say, um, gymnasium constructive or library? Yes, exactly. I have a feeling that when we leave tonight, <clears throat> I'll have a nice, fat endowment check in my pocket. Well, I have the same feeling. Mr. Merriweather told me you'd made a very great impression on her. Yes, I suppose I have. I mean to say, I, I have some, uh, respectable degrees, and I've written a few good books. Oh, it's your good looks that have impressed her, not your good book. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> nonsense, Victoria. <laughs> i never, never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. Oh. <laughs> uh. Good look. <laughs> Me. <laughs> you really think so? <laughs> I do. I'm not the only one. Every co-ed on the campus is mad about you. <laughs> you're, you're just saying that. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> this is as far as I can go. Driver, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, sorry, folks. There's a detour. I didn't know nothing about the roads under construction. Oh, will it take us much out of our way? Mm, about eight miles, uh, approximately. We'd have to go over that bridge and all the way around. How long will that take? Almost 15 minutes, Nellie. Mm. It's ten of eight now, and Mrs. Foster's very fussy about punctuality. Suppose we walk the rest of the way. All right. Uh, uh, driver, how far are we from 383 Hyacinth Road? Merely 12 blocks, only. <laughs> uh, I don't mind walking if you think we can make it by eight. Oh, we can do it easily. All right, here you are, driver. Uh, keep the change. Uh -huh. Thank you. Do we just walk straight ahead? We've never been out this way before. Uh, uh, just uh, straight ahead, uh, almost. You can't miss it, but there are long blocks, and you better walk fast if you want to be there by eight, practically. Thank you. Well, let's hurry, Victoria. Mr. Merriweather, the entire Board of Governors, in fact, to show me how insistent Mrs. Foster is that her guests arrive on time. Oh, don't worry, Toddy. Twelve blocks in ten minutes. We'll be there by eight. Mm, it's only that I don't want anything to mar the impression I've made. The board is rather counting on me to bring her into the fold of donors. <laughs> I hope that we... Well, what a, what a revolting-looking animal. I Look, look, Victoria. <laughs> you know, it seems such a, 
such a mongrel in your life. It seems to be all the dogs ever bred wrapped up into one. Oh, I find it rather appealing, the way you sit there looking at it. Don't like the pole in that comic strip. May we stop for a moment to pet it? Well, I have one, one pet only, if you don't mind, darling. No time for more. <laughs> oh, no, it is affectionate, isn't it? We are happy to see us on to your birth bubble. Yes, you are. You do sit in the air, Vicky, I hate to interrupt this passionate courtship, but uh, if we're late, we're liable to lose a large endowment. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are. Yes, we are. <laughs> Oh, sorry, darling. Goodbye, dog. I think it's lost. It had a collar around its neck, but no license. No, it probably belongs to the house just behind this wall. It's fed a dozen times a day, and on the whole, lives much better and more securely than the average instructor. Mm. No, I think it's lost. Well, what makes you think so? Because it's following us. Seems to have no place in particular to go. Oh, go home, sir. Go home. <laughs> Such is the female. Oh, go home, sir, or madam, Mr. Casey. <laughs> oh, Dorothy's is doing all his tricks for us, sitting up and rolling over. Oh, he won't be up right as old smarty pants on to. <laughs> uh, Victoria, please, darling, uh, don't encourage him. We, we down, sir. Down, sir. Down, down. Oh, down, he, down, he only down. wants to kiss you. Uh, Victoria, no one can accuse me of being... Uh, anti-dog, but any desire I have to be slobbered over by a mongrel stray at this particular moment is so small that it borders on the microscopic. We simply haven't the time. Now, I- I've got to chase him away. Don't be startled. I'm going to shout at him. Go away! Go away! And it was on. Here's the day. Cram! That did it. Look at him run. Now, please, let us hurry, Victoria. Yeah. I hope he'll be all right. Well, of course he will. He was all right for years before we came along, and there's no reason to suppose he won't be all right for years after we've departed. Nice to be run over or something. Well, it simply isn't our problem. I'm sorry if I seem callous, but in wangling an endowment of certain ruthlessness. Oh, oh, Toddy. You don't suppose he's been hit? Well, of course he hasn't been hit. I'm sure he hasn't been hit. I mean, aren't you? I uh, have a queer feeling in the pit of my stomach. I mean, he was so alive just a minute ago. He would by any chance. Um... But, it, but it, it's late. <laughs> We're going to be late. We, we, we'd best go back and see if he's all right. Harry, take my hand. This is ridiculous. As much as a million dollars waiting for me, and I'm running in the opposite direction. I've had nightmares like this. <laughs> Be as much as a million. Well, even if it's only half a million, it's ridiculous. How will we get him to a vet? Well, one of these houses to try. Hold it, hold it, Victoria. Hold it. Oh, you're safe, aren't you? You're frightened. You know that? You said you're frightened. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> what seems to be the trouble? A uh, dog annoying you? No, not at all, officer. No, he's a very friendly dog. Too friendly, in fact. He's been following us for the last ten minutes, and it seems likely to go on ad infinitum. Uh, I, I mean, he seems likely to go on endlessly. I know what ad infinitum means, mister. What makes you think I don't? Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. What makes you think I don't know what ad infinitum means? Simply because I'm a policeman doesn't mean I'm an ignoramus. Well, I, I wasn't sure my husband had no intention. It may surprise you to learn that I have a degree in police administration from Fordham University. Oh, if I, I seem patronizing, I'm sorry. I... Uh, it's just that I'm tired of people who have a stereotyped conception of a policeman. Now, how would you like it if people had a stereotyped conception of your job? Well, as a matter of fact, they have. My job is teaching. <laughs> I, I don't have to tell you how many jokes I hear in the course of a year about absent-minded professors. <laughs> Doesn't it get you down? <laughs> Little kid called me a flatfoot yesterday. My feet happen to be perfectly arched. I could show you. <laughs> yes, I, I know what you mean. You know, there was a newspaper editorial last week in which teachers were called long hair. <laughs> I leave it to you. Is my hair long? Yeah, uh, William, I don't want to interrupt this coffee chart, but it's getting very late. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Um, officer, this dog seems to be lost. Have you any idea where it belongs? Well, I'm new on this feed. I have no idea whose dog it is. Uh, oh, well, my wife is afraid, and I am too, that it may be run over unless someone takes care of it. Maybe place it in your hands. Well, what would I do with it? 
I have eight more hours before I'm relieved. The sergeant drives fast to check up on me, finds me walking the dog. I'm liable to wind up patrolling way out of Marie Antoinette Plaza, near the garbage dump. <laughs> uh, why don't you take it with you? Uh, well, we're on our way to a dinner party, and if we came with a stray dog... Uh, it... I see what you mean. It would be, shall we say, outre. Uh, how, how was that? Uh, oh, oh, yes, uh, outre, of course. Yes, it, it would be tres outre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't you be persuaded to look after it for a few hours? It, it keeps you amused. I'm afraid amusement isn't what I'm here for. Look at that. I just ended a sentence with a preposition. Shows you how careless a man gets after he graduates. Oh, it's considered proper usage these days in some quarters. You don't say? Yes, as a colloquialism. Oh, I can't say that I approve. Uh, I am a purist. Yes. <laughs> so am I. Uh, particularly when it comes to grammatic construction. I agree. As a matter of fact, I devoted an entire chapter to it in my book, Grammar and Its Effect on Social Behavior. Oh, I've read that. Did you write that? Boy, please, uh, we're terribly late. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Good heavens, look at the time. It's past eight. Um, officer, uh, what should we do? Forget about it. It's not your problem. Exactly what I said a few minutes ago. Now, come on, Victoria. The dog catcher will probably pick it up tomorrow. Exactly. We can bet. The dog catcher. What will he do with it? Take it downtown to the pound. The pound? Well, isn't that where they... Well, where what, they... What, what, what will they do there? Oh, he's washed, combed, fed, kept very comfortably for one week. And after that... You mean if no one claims it? Yes. Sic transit gloria mundi. <laughs> oh, no. You mean it's done away with? Oh, no, Toddy. Well, surely there's some alternative. Well, there is. Take the dog by the scruff of the neck and march him from house to house. All right, officer, we'll try it. Good night, lady. Good night. Uh, good night, officer. Thank you. Uh, ever read Senator Fell's tribute to his dog? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Fine rhetoric, don't you think? Yes, fine, fine. Oh, fine. William. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Night. Good night. What are we going to do? Do? I'll show you. Come here, come here, Rover. Come here. You know what I'm going to do with you? I'm going to find your home. Now, Mrs. Foster is not going to like it, sir. Do you know what it's apt to cost me to get you home? A million dollars. Yes, it is. A million dollars. Yes, it is. A million, a million, a million. Yes, 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 it is. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Slits is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Before we return to the halls of Ivy, let's hear the story of how one man developed a taste for family parties and Slits beer. Well, ordinarily, I look forward to family parties like I look forward to two weeks of rain on my vacation. Oh, but I, uh, I make one exception. There's a certain relative of my wife who can win me away from my fireside any day. He's the one who introduced me to Schlitz beer, and I still thank him for it. I, uh, I remember when his relative first invited us over for a family get-together. My wife wanted to go, and I didn't, so we compromised and went. On the way over, I visualized a dismal evening playing some game like charades, which I happened to particularly detest. But things began to look up the moment our host greeted us at the door and said, I, I hope you won't mind if we don't waste the evening playing silly parlor games. And when I discovered that we were both fly fishermen, well, I, I began to think of my host as more of a friend than a relative. It was just about then that he brought in the slip beer. Well, the evening was full of pleasant surprises. I'd heard many good things about slips and had always planned to try it. So try it I did. And never have I tasted a beer as satisfying. As I drank, I found myself hoping that this particular in-law would throw another family party very soon. And I found myself saying, as surely others have said in tasting this fine beer, no wonder they call Schlitz a beer that made Milwaukee famous. <laughs> As we return to the halls of Ivy, we find a rather irritated Dr. Hall 
Walking with Victoria and a huge, friendly, very lost dog in the general direction of the home of Mrs. Millicent Foster, at whose dinner party he's supposed to be guest of honor. They are now almost a half hour late. They go up the steps of the small residence. I do feel ridiculous, Vicky. I'm not exactly dressed for the sheep's head field trials, you know. Oh, never mind, darling. Neither is Fido. Yes? I beg your pardon, but does this dog belong to you? We were just... Mister, uh... nothing belongs to me. I'm being evicted tomorrow. <laughs> you might as well find a home for him, too. <laughs> Oh, how do you do? Good evening. We were wondering... Yes, I know. Thank you for coming so promptly. Our own doctor is out of town or he wouldn't have bothered you. We never expected it so soon, of course. But we were just trying to... But you're just a tiny moment late. The ambulance got here first. Ambulance? Yes, the baby's due any second. He's at St. Vincent's Hospital, doctor. (laughs) Oh, what a lovely dog you have. Good night. (laughs) Oh, well... Good evening. How do you do? Have you lost a dog? No, but I'd like to. <laughs> you don't quite understand. We found a dog. Are you from a quiz program? Uh, no, but we, we have a dog here, and we don't know where he lives. Well, ask him, mister. Ask him. I'm busy. <laughs> A penny for them, Toddy. I'm thinking that Fido here is no ordinary dog. In fact, I suspect he's been planted here by some rival in competition for Mrs. Foster's doe. Uh, excuse me, endowment. Harvard, perhaps, or Yale. We've covered the entire area and couldn't even give him away. Some people are very callous to other people's sight. Am I to go through life dogged by this... this dog? <laughs> the ancient mariner with an albatross round his neck. Well, don't be bitter, darling. You've done a good deed so far, and I love you for it. Remember, virtue is its own reward. Yes, I can see myself explaining that to the board. <laughs> No, I didn't manage to get an endowment last night, gentlemen, but I was kind to an animal. Uh, They're not likely to canonize me for that and call me St. William. (laughs) I suppose not. A dog. Man's best friend. Uh, Another miss exploded. Vicky, you've more influence with this this monster than I. I Make him stop doing tricks. You can talk to him. Shall I tell him to go away? Uh, No, no, no. Better not. We may very shortly require a performing dog to help us earn our bread. (laughs) When we're out with a tin cup. (laughs) Well, anyway, Mrs. Foster is never going to believe our story unless he's with us. There's a car coming down the driveway. Try to be careful. That rover, come here. There's a good chap. Well, it looks like Mr. Wellman's limousine. Oh, with our chairman of the board to be a guest of Mrs. Foster this evening? Well, not that I know of, but he's never been known to miss a free meal in his life. (laughs) Is that you, Mr. Wellman? Dr. Hall, are you aware, sir, that you are more than one half hour late? I am, and I'm very sorry, I assure you. I shall make what I hope are adequate apologies to Mrs. Foster and the other guests at the dinner party. Dinner party? There is no dinner party. Not anymore. Oh? Mrs. Foster begs her guests to excuse her and retire to her room. Oh, my. She was extremely upset, and I don't blame her. I would be, too, if a guest of honor at one of my dinners failed to make an appearance, failed even to have the courtesy to telephone... Oh, Mr. William, we, we had a perfectly good explanation. Well, perfectly good may be too strong a term, but at least it's an understandable one. On the way here, we encountered this dog, which appeared to be lost. Indeed. And have you taken the position of dog catcher as a sideline? <laughs> uh, the dog seemed to be lost, and we feared it might be run over by an automobile. It was taken to the pound and destroyed. So we tried to learn where it belonged. You should have spent a bit more time considering where you belong. You belonged at Mrs. Foster's dinner party. Do you know what she did uh, just before I left? She tore up a certified check made out to the school. No. Tore it into tiny pieces right before my eyes. A, a check for $100,000. Oh, no. Yes. Needless to say, I am far from happy at this turn of the day. Yeah, I think events would have to turn a complete somersault for you ever to be happy, Mr. Wellman. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am not bubbling over with happiness myself. I think you are very heedless, Dr. Hall. I'm of the opinion the rest of the board will agree with me. I don't wish to discuss the matter any further tonight. There is no necessity for you to go on to the house. 
Mrs. Foster has gone to bed. Well, I shall still try to see her to tender my apologies. You're wasting your time, Dr. Hall. Again. Good night, Mr. Wellman. Good night. Carry on, Pearson. Well, that's that. I'm very sorry, not only for the money, but because I rather like Mrs. Foster and never intended to offend her. Perhaps we understand your explanation and you needn't agree that you acted for the best. Fine words, butter, no parsnip. But a soft answer turneth away raw. You really think I can make her understand? Oh, you know as well as I do. But when you set your mind to it, you can charm a bird right out of a tree. <laughs> the charming Mrs. Foster out of a high dudgeon may prove a bit more difficult. She may only be in a low dudgeon. Uh, I can't remember when I approached a dinner party with so much anxiety. <laughs> I can. That dance at the French Embassy in London. When you were first courting me. It was a long time ago. You remember it? Yes, of course, I remember it was the ball to which I had not been invited. Oh, you were invited. At least I was, and I invited you. I don't think I ever felt so unsure of myself. I almost ran away as we approached the embassy building. <laughs> if you hadn't been on my arm, I think I'd have both. I never was more nervous in my life. Stop worrying and fidgeting with your tongue. Are you, you sure? You're, you're sure I look all right? These evening clothes aren't mine, you know. I had to rent them, even these cufflinks. You look extremely handsome and distinguished. Oh, I wish I felt that way. Actually, I feel something like uh, Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, try, try not to be alarmed if at midnight these tails and white tie vanish and you see me standing there in shorts and a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should carry it off with all the stuff up there at my command. I shall say to one and all, my dear, haven't you heard? the latest rage in America. <laughs> of course, I realize no one's going to notice me. You're so beautiful this evening, everyone will be looking at you. Oh, no, no. Not really. But I feel beautiful when you look at me like that. Oh, dear. What, what, what is it? What? Your opera hat is collapsing. Oh, no. It's like a card trip. Oh, it's been deflating all the evening. Oh, you seem to be balancing an untidy pancake on your head. I told the man something was wrong with old Vicky. Let's turn back. It's not just my topper. All my clothes. Oh, sorry, are. stop it. Except that hat, which you can carry. Mm. You're impeccably dressed and you're going to have an amusing and interesting evening. Don't worry, you know. You disarrange your tie with your fidgeting. Here. Please fix it for you. Yes, ma'am. That's the oddest thing about your eyes, Vicky. They change color. Sometimes they're as blue as a lake in the Adirondacks, than which nothing is bluer. But at this moment, your eyes are almost violet. I keep a large variety on hand. A little woman comes in and makes them for me at two shillings an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to touch that tie again. I wish we had known each other longer. Two years instead of two weeks. Two weeks and two days. If we had, you'd know by this time that I'm not always like this. That I enter most situations with a certain aplomb. It's just that an embassy ball is rather a rich and sudden change of diet for a college professor on a sabbatical. After your first case, you lap it up and come back for more. Well, I'm not so sure of that. You know, this is very different from a social gathering at home. There, I have the confidence and assurance of being known and in good standing. But here, among these old titles, these medals, decorations, these shining rewards of a great empire for distinguished services, ah, oh, it's frightening. No, it's not frightening, William. It's very, very day. Yours as much of a knight in armor as any of them. And as for titles, my dear... Don't forget that to me, you're William the Conqueror. What? What was that you said? No, 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 don't, don't knock yet. We can't afford another no. moment to lay. We're late. Ah, oh, let the ambassador wait. I want you to say that again. Ambassador? That's what are you talking about? We are late for Mrs. Foster's party. Mrs. Foster. Mrs. Foster. Mrs. Foster. Oh, oh, Mrs. Foster. <laughs> oh, good. Oh. Cardi, where were you? Uh, at an ambassador's ball in London, my dear, with a pretzel on my head. Oh, no. This is no time for daydreaming. Time? Oh, oh, good heavens, no. We've got to apologize to Mrs. Foster. Well, stay here with me, then. Hey, good evening. Good evening. 
Is Mrs. Foster at home? Dr. and Mrs. Hall calling. No, 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 wait, please. No, don't shut the door. We wish to see her to apologize for... Please, Mary, someone for me? Yes, madam. Oh, Dr. Hall and Mrs. Hall. Uh, we would like to apologize, Mrs. Foster. That would be all, Kirby. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Mrs. Foster, we are so sorry you've been upset. Upset? Believe me, such a thing was furthest from our thoughts. Yes. You seem rather a positive genius for milk and water words. How would you feel if your guest of honor for the evening not only failed to appear, but didn't even notify you? <laughs> To get about the contempt you must feel for the help I could have given you. No, no, I assure you. This is really the last straw. Your discredit on top of everything else. As though I weren't already caring as much as a mortal could be expected to bear. The last straw? Pete, he lost, ran away, disappeared. Oh, you wouldn't understand. Pete, he's not by any chance a dog. He's not just a dog, he's my dog. I've had him for years, and suddenly he's... Not a raw-boned, flop-eared, bushy-tailed... Yes, yes. Have you seen him? Seen him? With Mrs. Foster. He's the reason we're late. We were trying to find his home for him. We... Uh, well, well, one moment. Come on. Pete, Pete. Just the hall, you... Oh, Pete. It is Pete. Oh, it's all right. You bad dog. Where have you been? I thought you'd been stolen or killed. It's just the hall. Pete may not look... But he's a very rare and valuable dog. I can't tell you how valuable. <laughs> if it were anyone of less consequence than you, Dr. Hall, I should offer him a large cash reward. You would, Mrs. Foster? <laughs> well, uh, if I may make a suggestion... <laughs> I tasted it. Now I know why Slicks is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Now here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Well, wasn't that wonderful, Toddy? For rescuing her dog, Mrs. Foster gave you an extra $50,000 for the college. The reward of virtue. No, oh, no, virtue of mine. You might just as well give credit to the town planning commission. If the road hadn't been under repair, we wouldn't have had to walk and wouldn't have seen the dog. Why not thank the taxi driver? He told us to take the shortcut where we found the dog. Or the policeman. If he'd taken the dog as we wanted him to, Mrs. Foster would never... Or have... the horrible man who drove the car that frightened the dog. Or the beautiful wife of the horrible man who drove the car that frightened the dog. No, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's on the table. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, my dear. Good night, everyone. Good night. We'll be seeing you next week at this time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The other players were Herbert Butterfield, Janet Scott, Jane Morgan, Herbert Bygram, Jack Tushman, and Gary Hausner. Tonight's script was written by Walter Brown Newman and Don Quinn. Our music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Slip Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Next, listen for We the People over most of these NBC stations.